You've been lied to about calisthenics. They told you that calisthenics is the free-to-play version of the gym because you need zero equipment. But then you started to watch videos online and notice that people are training calisthenics with equipment all the time. Now you're left wondering what's worth buying because you don't want to waste your money on useless equipment. Don't worry, in this video, I'll cover everything you need to know about calisthenics equipment. I will go through the most common ones and break down what's essential versus non-essential. Let's dive into it. Starting with a no-brainer, we have the doorway pull-up bar. If I had a super limited budget and had to choose one single piece of equipment out of this whole video to get and leave the rest, it would be the doorway pull-up bar. In fact, this particular doorway pull-up bar was the first piece of equipment I ever purchased about 6 years ago and it's still usable to this day, though the grip is starting to fall apart. I remember I bought this at a local fitness store for about 15 Canadian dollars, worth every penny. If you don't like this type of pull-up bar that holds onto the door frame with pressure, you can look into these kinds of doorway pull-up bars that hook onto the top of your door. No matter the pull-up bar you choose, just make sure your door frame is solid enough to support your weight or you'll end up in a fail compilation. It's pretty much essential to have access to a pull-up bar in my opinion because training back without equipment is honestly suboptimal. You end up having to get super creative. This is not as much the case for training chest, triceps, and front delts since there are so many great variations of push-ups that cover all your bases for pushing movements i consider dip bars useful but non-essential if you can afford them then it can be worth getting yourself a pair because you can not only do dips but also planche work l sits rows front levers and more but most of these can be done without the dip bars the main thing you should consider though is how much you like dips if dips are an essential part of your routine then definitely consider getting yourself some dip bars. But if you just like to do dips once in a while, you can probably get away with something like countertop dips or chair dips. All right, this next one is for my friends with terrible wrist mobility. Parallettes are a great tool as they allow you to keep your wrists in a more neutral position for things like push-ups, handstands, and planche. So if you find these exercises are rough on your wrists because they are super inflexible like me, parallettes are definitely worth the purchase. But not only that, some people find skills on parallettes to be easier because you have something to hold on to unlike when you're doing ground skills. Another interesting thing about parallettes is that they come in various different shapes and sizes. These are low wooden parallettes, which have a pretty soft feel to them and absorb sweat. A lower height makes it easier for things like kicking up into a handstand. However, it takes away leg room at the bottom. That's where these higher parallettes that I received recently from Calisthenics Pro come in. More leg room is easier for planche work, transitions like the L-sit to handstand, and any variation of deep push-ups. The metal material makes them feel super sturdy and the knurling on the handle helps with grip. They also have a rounder grip that differs from the wooden parallettes. There isn't really a shape that's better than the other, it really depends on what each person finds more comfortable. Something else to keep in mind is that with the wider base and heavier weight of these, you can also explore different handstand grips like the straight bar handstand without being afraid of it tipping over. All in all, a great piece of equipment. Calisthenics Pro was also kind enough to send me wrist wraps and chalk, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Let's discuss this legendary piece of equipment right here, the infamous gymnastic rings. These things are super versatile since you can adjust them and move them around, so just about any muscle group in your body can be trained with rings. If building muscle and being able to isolate certain muscle groups with calisthenics is a goal of yours, gymnastics rings are the way to go. They will also have you shaking the first couple of times you do dips, forcing you to work on your stability as well. This extra instability usually adds a level of difficulty to many of the static skills too. Though on the other hand, rings also give you more options in terms of grip and can be more comfortable when doing different exercises. All in all, rings are super useful. I wouldn't say that they are essential because you can get good at calisthenics without rings. However, having rings definitely enhances your training. So we've pretty much covered the main equipment that you would use to work out on. Now let's get into the accessories. Potentially the most useful calisthenics accessory for learning skills is the resistance bands. They come in various different colors, which all provide a different amount of resistance. Although you can get away with learning calisthenics skills without bands, you would be missing out. Bands allow you to bridge the gap between progressions and give you the possibility of feeling how a certain skill is supposed to feel before you even have the strength to actually perform said skill. And since understanding the right activation is just as important as building strength when it comes to skills training, bands really become a great addition to your training. Bands are also a great warm-up tool, stretching tool, and can also be used to make exercises harder. Some people also use bands to do some bodybuilding style exercises. The possibilities are truly endless. Now, I'd be lying if I said bands were essential because you can learn calisthenics without bands, but they are as close to essential as you can get. Next accessory we have on the list is wrist wraps. Super popular amongst calisthenics athletes, especially once they hit intermediate level and above. Wrist wraps are one of those pieces of equipment 
where you just know if you need them or not. As a beginner, I recommend waiting and building a base of wrist strength first. Then eventually, as you get more advanced in calisthenics, you may or may not hit a point where you think, damn, I wish I had some extra support and stability around my wrists. That's when you can make the decision for yourself to see if you want to get a pair of wrist wraps. Chances are, you will though, because calisthenics is one of those sports that really puts some stress on the wrist joint. I personally use wrist wraps almost every workout, but let me go further in helping you choose wrist wraps because I'd like to go above and beyond for you guys. You've probably noticed that there are these kinds of wrist wraps available on the market with the Velcro and stuff but there are also these ones that are super long with a string at the end. I'm sure you're wondering what the difference is and which one you should get. These wrist wraps with the Velcro are very commonly used by bodybuilders and powerlifters, but also work for calisthenics. They are quick and easy to put on and provide constant support. However, it is not as versatile because you can't really adjust the tightness very easily. That's where these wrist wraps come in. These are wrist wraps made for calisthenics. They're a bit longer to put on, but you can really personalize how tight they are. Even once you tie them on, you can just twist in one direction to make them tighter and twist in the other direction to make them looser. Plus, they look way cooler in my opinion. Come on now guys, who else out there is giving you the intricacies of wrist wraps like this? Okay guys, let's talk about this white stuff I got on my hands. Chalk is an accessory that you will often see used at the highest level of calisthenics, especially those that partake in competitions because grip and performance are of the utmost importance. However, even if you aren't competitive in calisthenics, chalk can be super practical for those of us who get sweaty hands. I personally like this liquid chalk from Calisthenics Pro because it's easy to carry it around, quick to apply, and dries out your hands in an instant. This can be essential or non-essential depending on how sweaty your hands tend to get. If slippery hands stop you from getting the most out of your training, then consider getting chalk. If not, then save your money. Another staple piece of equipment is the weight vest slash dip belt. This is the accessory for more advanced calisthenics athletes who want to explore the world of weighted calisthenics. If maximizing raw strength and building muscle is your goal, then the weighted accessories are for you. The weight vest stays close to your body, which allows you to do weighted exercises that can't be done with the dip belt, such as handstand push-ups, lunges, sprints, etc. However, there is an upper limit to how much weight can be added in a weight vest. With the dip belt, you can't really do weighted push-ups. However, there is pretty much no limit to how much weight you can add as long as it fits between your legs. So you can go crazy on weighted dips, weighted pull-ups, and even weighted muscle-ups. I personally use an old backpack and fill it with weights when I train at home. And when I'm at the gym, I use the gym's dip belt to get my weighted dips and pull-ups in. There are definitely ways to work around not having these, but if you really use it often, it can be worth your money. Before I end the video, I've got one honorable mention. The Nordic hamstring curl thingy. <laughs> if you care about legs, these are super practical because isolating your hamstrings with calisthenics isn't as easy as it is for quads and calves. But if you're a true calisthenics athlete, you skip legs anyways, so it's definitely non-essential. Hope that helps you guys choose what equipment is worth your money. I will link in the description all the gear that was featured in this video if it's available online. Also, if you're interested in online one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, there will be a link to apply for that as well. Peace.